What's up everybody? Once again, MonkeyDo22 here, back again for another video. And in this video today, we're going to take another look at the new Xbox One dashboard that's currently in testing and development right now. As I mentioned in the last video, I am in the member of the Xbox One Insiders program. That's basically a program where you can test out new Xbox features, dashboards, things like backwards compatibility and other fun things that may or may not actually get released down the road. Previously in the video, I did show you the new dashboard, which I'm still running right now. And this basically has everything that's now in a list format, as opposed to the different tabs that were at the very top that you'd scroll from left to right. Xbox is testing quite a few different styles of dashboards right now. This is just one of the iterations. Nobody knows for sure if this version will actually be released or if there might be some changes to the dashboard beforehand. But in today's video, I wanted to show you the new settings section. So let's go on and head over into settings and take a closer look. So if we hit the guide button on the controller, scroll all the way to the right to system, and then hit A on settings, we're gonna find our new settings menu. And you may go, wow, there is a lot fewer options here. It's not that there's fewer options, they're just better organized for everybody's convenience. So now we have the general section, account, system, devices and streaming, preferences and ease of access so you can see they, they kind of rolled in a couple of different things into newer sections so for preferences for example this is where you're going to find your notification settings activity feed capture and share idle options break reminders and feedback devices and streaming this is where you're going to find all the different stuff from accessories digital assistance device connections mouse blu-ray Disk settings, connect, yes, connect is still a thing, and this is where you can adjust the settings for it. Media remotes and other things like that. System is where you're gonna find your console information, your storage settings, so this is if you wanted to make transfers, copy, move different kinds of uh, data from your different hard drives, uh, signed in, uh, signed out content restrictions, updates and downloads, language and location, Cortana settings, backup and transfer, and your clock or time as it is listed here. Account, which is where you'll find sign-in, security, and pass key, payment and billing options, subscriptions, linked social accounts, privacy and online safety, family settings. You can remove accounts from here and check out content restrictions for those of you that have family settings enabled. General is where you're gonna find the network settings, personalization, online safety and family, TV display options, volume and out audio output, and power mode and startup and of course down at the bottom of the list we have the ease of access this is where you'll find the narrator controller options game transcription magnifier closed captioning audio and high contrast options so i just wanted to kind of show you a couple of different options in here that i found really helpful for me and it may be helpful for you so in the general and under network settings it now has a different kind of uh, option interface here so you now have the setup wireless network, which of course you had test network connection, console streaming, test network speed and statistics, test multiplayer connection, and test your NAT type. One of the things here is because now when people are talking about Project X Cloud, one of the things included with that is console streaming. You will be able to stream your games from the console to your mobile devices that are using the game streaming apps. So you can absolutely test that right now. We'll go ahead and test it by hitting the A button and it's gonna go ahead and test our setup. It's gonna be looking for things like our network connection, network types and things of that nature here. And as soon as it finishes, we'll get a different kind of readout, which will show you all the different things it's looking for. So here's the thing that you can start planning ahead if you are planning to do uh, console game streaming, maybe you're not gonna do Project X Cloud, but maybe you're gonna be doing the local connections here. So you can see the different NAT types. Right now I have a moderate NAT connection. Open that makes it a little bit more likely that I'll be able to connect with the console with a little bit more ease. You can see right now that the recommended upstream bandwidth is over nine megabit per second. We do meet that requirement. The network latency is less than 60 milliseconds. We do meet that. Our network type is wired and our outbound port is open. Now the controller. Controller firmware, until our next update, some buttons might not work as expected. This is basically when you're in the game streaming app uh, some of the controllers uh, settings are not quite mapped perfectly. This is going to be something that they are going to continue to be working on uh, as they go through the development and roll out these new features. And of course, our console settings is power set to instant on. Uh, that means we can start connecting even if the console isn't currently on. So then we can go ahead and close out with that or we can click help with this. 
if you're looking for more help into resolving some of these issues. So next thing we want to take another look at is the test network speed and statistics. This is another thing that I found out quite useful and uh, I think it'll be useful for everybody else as well if you're troubleshooting your network connections. Maybe you're seeing some higher latency, maybe you're seeing uh, issues connecting with folks, maybe you're just seeing a really a lot of lag in different multiplayer games. This is the place where you want to kind of go and you want to check all that stuff out. But now it's in a little bit of an easier to read format. So it's going to finish checking the connection and then we can go ahead and take a quicker look at it. And then we can kind of discuss all the different kind of options here. So as we can see right now, we see the download speed right now that I have 551.44 megabit per second download. Upload 8.73 megabit. Uh, packet loss, we're showing zero right now. Uh, MTUs is 1480. That's pretty standard. You don't really have to mess with that kind of a setting. And your latency right now, or at least my latency, is 41 milliseconds. You can run this test quite a few different times, and you'll be able to see uh, the most consistent readouts. That's really what you want to use as your average. Yeah, this is what it ran for just this particular test. But if I was to run it again, I bet you I might get different download speeds or upload speeds. Uh, normally, my upload speed is around 30 megabit, but the best way to really tell what's actually going on, run it a few different times, and you'll be able to tell basically by the average. Of course, you can go into bandwidth usage. This is another important thing to take a look at. You can see basically what the current usage is right now, what the console is using, the total usage this period, time period, so this is the date range that it's running these statistics for, and then you can choose to reset the period on a specific day. So basically right now, it's going from the 30th to the 31st right now, from September 30th to October 31st. And you can see my usage hours, usage uh, data over the last 12 hours and the historical bandwidth usage per month rolling for the last 12 months. So you can see that I've been using quite a bit of data here, downloading more games, uh, applications, doing a lot of Netflix streaming and all that kind of fun stuff as well. So if you really wanted to keep tabs on all of your bandwidth usage and stuff like that, a really great resource to check all that out. Of course, you can also take a look at your test network connection. This is going to tell you if you have any sort of overarching issue with like high latency, if your NAT type is kind of off and all of that different kind of stuff. So that's uh, pretty much what it is for the network section here. And then, of course, you have the different TV and display options. If you want to take more uh, detail and a look at uh, if you're using like a 4K uh, display option, if you're using like a 1080p, 720p display option, you can take a look at the 4K TV details and it will tell you right now if your TV is compatible and all of that good stuff. It's just a little bit easier setup of a layout to kind of give you all of those different options and show you everything as well. Device control right here as well. You can set this up to basically make it so that it will have your uh, TV power on uh, automatically when you start up the console, uh, cable satellite boxes, things of that nature. This is where you would go to set up that kind of stuff. Um, these are a lot of the same options that have been in existence previously. It's just a little bit easier to find that stuff now instead of just going through all of the different menus and whatnot. Uh, account is pretty much the same. They haven't really moved a whole lot around in this particular section. Uh, sign in security and pass key. This is if you need to change in uh, how you basically sign into your Xbox account if you wanted to set it up through your controller. Uh, automatically signing in. You can go and look at the payment and billing history, subscriptions, linked social accounts. So if you linked like a Twitter account to your Xbox account, Facebook, Discord, things like that, this is where you would unlink those social media accounts. Uh, privacy online safety, this is where you're going to be able to change all the different options from who can see when I'm online, who can see um, any of the custom stuff that I post, um, all of that kind of fun stuff right there. Same thing with family settings remove accounts, content restrictions, everything else is pretty basic and pretty much in the same sense here. Going down to system console information, you can take a look at all of that good stuff. You can find out your serial number. You can find out what version of the dashboard you're running. All of that good stuff's right there. I'm not going to drill into this section right now for this video because a lot of that's personal information you don't generally want to share out, um, except for maybe to an Xbox support uh, agent who might need that information to help troubleshoot or set up a warranty uh, repair option. Uh, storage, this is all the same thing right here. This is where you're doing this. Transfers, copies, moving, uh, any kind of games or apps between hard drives. Nothing's really changed there. Uh, updates and downloads, we can take a quick peek at this real quick. You can uh, see all the different stuff from the latest console update status, so we can check it out. We can see what the latest update is. Uh, we can see the last automatic check for updates and if that update was successful. You can also press A on what's new to see what was new in that latest update. And of course, all that information is available on Xbox.com. 
uh, when you go into the support.xbox.com and check for console info uh, updates, you'll be able to find the update log there. But that's just another way to get to it. Uh, you can also select to keep your console up to date, uh, keeps in the games and apps up to date and stuff like that too. All these different settings uh, you can change right here. Downloads, you can allow remote installation. So if you have the Xbox Game Pass app on your mobile phone, right here you can go ahead and um, enable this setting so you can allow that to work. You can also be able to set it up so that if you go to xbox.com and purchase a game, you can allow that remote installation, which will basically allow you to select the console to install the game to uh, without having to turn on the console and let it go. So same thing here uh, with the allow mobile management. So that's, like I said, that Game Pass app. And uh, aside from that, we've got devices and streaming. A lot of this kind of stuff is pretty much the same. They didn't really change a whole lot here. Um, like I said, this was a lot of recategorization of all of the different options and to make it a little bit easier to find all these different um, sections, subsections, uh, to find all this different information. Uh, digital assistance, if you set up your Xbox console to work with um, a, a digital assistant such as an Amazon uh, device, you would be able to um, change all those different options and settings here. Uh, preferences, this is all the same thing at this point. Uh, nothing's really changed in here, nothing worth of note anyway. Uh, capture and share, there is a couple of different options here. Uh, you can go in here and you can change the different allow captures, game captures by me or games. You can basically turn that off. If you do not want the game to automatically capture something, you can just do captures by me or don't capture. You can also change the record that durations. Uh, the game clip resolutions between 4K HDR, SDR, uh, 1080p SDR, and 420 SDR. Uh, SDR standing for standard uh, definition there. Um, or the high dynamic range or the standard dynamic range there. So that is what we're looking for. Uh, com capture location, this is where if you want to change where you're, uh, of course, storing uh, these particular photos and screenshots and things of that nature. Uh, if you'd like to, you can set up a break reminder. You can uh, set it up for every 30 minutes, hour, hour and a half or two hours. Um, basically, if you're the kind of person who likes to sit down and play games for a long particular time, and uh, sometimes like that subtle reminder, hey, you've been playing for about two hours, Maybe you should think about setting the controller down and taking a break or taking a walk, getting a drink of water or something like that. Uh, the break reminder is a great section and things for you. I actually kind of like it whenever I do streaming uh, because I do a two hour time block and this also sends me a reminder uh, when the two hours is uh, kind of up. So there you go. Ease of access if you need to change any of these other settings like narrator, uh, controller. This is where you'd set up the co-pilot system. You can go right in here. You can change your button mappings if you need to change the or swap or remap buttons here. You can do that right in uh, the controller app that's uh, launching right now. The Xbox Accessories app, I believe, as they call it now. So, yeah, you can change all that good stuff right here. All right. Well, I think that's uh, about going to wrap it up uh, for this video. If you have any other comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please let me know by leaving a comment in the comments section below. If you like these particular type of dashboard videos and you want to see more in the future, make sure to click that like button so that I know that folks like this content and they want to see some more of it. But otherwise, I'm MonkeyDo22. Thanks so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next video.